Africa continues to lag behind the rest of the world in receiving COVID-19 vaccines. Just 1% of the 1.3 billion vaccines administered globally have been utilized on this continent. About 39 African countries have begun rolling out the COVID-19 vaccine, but the lack of funding and trained professionals has meant that vaccinations are happening at a much slower rate. In fact, this is what the WHO's Director General, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, has had to say just yesterday about the global vaccine inequity in distribution. Take a listen. The ongoing vaccine crisis is a scandalous inequity that's perpetuating the pandemic. More than 75% of all vaccines have been administered in just 10 countries. There is no diplomatic way to say it. A small group of countries that make and buy the majority of the world's vaccines control the fate of the rest of the world. The number of doses administered globally so far would have been enough to cover all health workers and older people if they had been distributed equitably. We could have been in a much better situation. Let's unpack those remarks, bring in our guest. Dr. Fiona Atuhebwe is the WHO's new vaccines regional introduction officer. She joins us now from Brazzaville in Congo uh, to give us a closer look at Africa's COVID-19 vaccination sites on a day like this. Dr. Atuhebwe, great to see you. Greetings from Johannesburg. It's lovely to have you on the program. So a, a recent uh, study by the Lancet Journal, if my memory serves me well, was looking at around 10 countries on the continent. It found that almost half of those who are critically ill, who are admitted into hospital with COVID-19, have died. That's a figure that's the highest in anywhere else in the world. I wonder whether for you, that kind of stat is enough to shift the dial for vaccinations to happen at a rate that we need them to happen on this continent. Uh, thank you very much. That is very true because as you know, the vaccine is out there was the major objective of this vaccine was to reduce suffering from severe disease uh, and hospitalization and death. So with what we are seeing, especially with our African fragile health systems, with most of the people that are being hospitalized actually ending up dying, there's no better time than this to vaccinate the most at risk populations to ensure that anybody who gets in contact with this virus actually does not progress to severe disease. And what do we pin this down to? I mean, you know, part of the question that we're asking ourselves is it is it poor planning or is it just geopolitics? I mean, is it just the rest of the world not being moved enough to help Africa avert what we now can appreciate to be a possible worst case scenarios if again, we don't get our vaccination rate to where it needs to be? So it is a mix of issues. We do have the geopolitics, of course, that are at work, at play. But we also know that the fact that Africa does not manufacture, basically 99% of our vaccines on the African continent are imported. So the fact that we don't have the manufacturing capacity really puts us back in the line that we have to be fully dependent on other continents that are manufacturing these vaccines. Again, most of the vaccines that were, have been received on the African continent are from the Serum Institute of India. Nobody anticipated what is happening in India now. Nobody foresaw that. So the fact that we actually would have been on the right lane because India had committed to giving us these doses. But the crisis that set in definitely threw us back so, by so, so many miles. But we are still seeing a lot that is going on with many richer, higher income countries sharing their doses, ready to share their doses with Africa. And we are, WHO is really, really, really reaching out to these countries and asking for more and more, as you heard from the Director General, for more sharing of these doses and countries, higher income countries that have more vaccine than they need or have already vaccinated their priority groups to give some of these doses to Africa. Yeah, uh, I was hoping to get there later on, but since we, we're having that conversation, I mean, uh, the complexity is brought on by the supply crunch, definitely top of mind when we think about why we're not where we need to be. The Serum Institute of India, as you mentioned, had been really um, one of the institutions that was hoped will be able to boost our vaccination rate. They can't do that because of their own outbreak. Do you know what the alternative is then for COVAX? 
So we have several alternatives that are being looked at. Uh, one, you know, the AstraZeneca vaccine is manufactured in two sites so far, Serum Institute of India and South Korea. So to ramp up the manufacturing in South Korea. But we also have discussions that are going with different countries that have never manufactured vaccines but have the capacity to set up and start manufacturing vaccines immediately. These discussions are ongoing to see if this can happen as soon as possible. But we are also studying lots of, uh, following lots of trends and studies in different countries that have, for example, had an extended uh, span between two doses to see like Canada, which has vaccinated 16 weeks apart with the two doses to see if that can be considered if the immunity still uh, stays high up there. We are also WHO working around the clock to review all the data that has been presented to it by several other vaccine manufacturers. And that is how we saw J&J uh, &J and Sinopharm also being approved recently. Sinovac is still being reviewed and the Sputnik uh, v from, from Russia, so to increase the basket of vaccines that are available to the African continent, but also actively pursuing the dose sharing, which is the fastest way for Africa to get out of the crisis of its uh, distribution inequities. Yeah, a lot of talk of the TRIPS waiver also possibly being a much needed development to try assist states in on the continent. I mean, in, in my mind, this is just a first step of an incredibly long journey ahead even if these waivers were to be lifted. In other words, even if countries around the world were able to start manufacturing their own vaccines, the hurdle for us is that there's still an incredible amount of uh, gaps in our infrastructure such that even if we were allowed to produce them, we might as well not be able to. That is very true. Sharing the intellectual property is just but one of the barriers to achieving uh, equitable and affordable access to vaccines and technologies. So vaccine manufacturing is complex and we require coordination from regional economic communities, governments, support and strong financial investments. It also needs capacity building of local expertise in research and development, vaccine production, and ensuring that a strong regulatory framework is in place to oversee the quality assurance and clinical trials to test products. And in addition to patents, we also need manufacturers to transfer, to transfer the technological know-how and data on other certified vaccine manu to, uh, with other certified vaccine manufacturers. And this can take, can take even years to achieve rather than weeks and months like we would imagine after the TRIPS waiver is out. So we are happy that the issue is on the table and we call on governments and companies to actively engage in conversations to enable the rapid scale up and equitable pro production and distribution of these vaccines. Yeah. Dr. Atuebue, I wonder what you think the message to the world should be on a day like this, on Africa Day, given the issues we've ventilated now. Um, if, if world leaders were to pay attention to one thing on a day like this, what would it be for you? World leaders need to know that African lives matter. Again, we have sung the song over and over again, no one is safe until everybody is safe. This virus lingers on in Africa, we get new mutants that could be even more dangerous than what we have right now. That dose sharing and the equitable distribution must happen. Countries should stop holding doses and consider African priority, priority groups that are most at risk of severe disease and death. African lives matter and deserve to be saved. Yeah, we had heard from the start of the outbreak or the onset of the outbreak that, you know, part of the real concerns for us on the continent is our ability to even track the virus itself. You've mentioned the possibility of more mutations coming about. Are you confident of the, whether or not we even on top of the variants that are currently at play on the continent? We may not be on top of, of, of it, but we are really, really, ha there's a lot that has been done. We now have ability of all the 47 countries. We have placed major labs, uh, Africa CDC working in collaboration with WHO and member states, major labs in several countries that are able to detect these variants. So, and we have the, we do have the technical know-how. We now have the people who can actually do this. The scientists are there. So a lot has been going on. The labs, the equipment, the technology is there. We just have to be vigilant. People just need not rest, did not give up because someone has to be out there really rigorously looking out for these uh, variants. Yeah, you know, the criticism for us in the media is, is that we typically always focus on the things that are going wrong 
I wonder whether we have pockets of success on the continent that are worth highlighting now for a sense of things that are going right. Yes, we do have a lot that is going right. We have countries that have done an excellent job. Let's start with the fact that 60% of all vaccine that we have received on the continent has been administered. So we have had expiries that happened in the past uh, due to different reasons, but we have had countries, and country like Morocco has administered 11 million doses of vaccine with 6.4 million people having received two doses, meaning fully vaccinated. Seychelles has vaccinated over 60% of their population. Eswatini, Lesotho, Rwanda, Morocco, Tunisia, these have nearly used up all the doses they have in their countries. Kenya, we've seen countries like Kenya, we hear South Africa, you're doing an excellent job, the campaign is gaining momentum. And also moving from, from the phase 3B study trials in South Africa to the vaccine rollout, that's a great step. People do not know how much it takes to move just from that level to the next level. So a lot has gone on. We have a number of countries, more than 50%, uh, about 50% of the African countries have vaccinated, have used about 50% of their total vaccine. Well, we do have some countries that are not doing, uh, uh, not ro rolling out the vaccine at the pace we expected, but a lot has been done by many countries to vaccinate their population. It's on that promising note that we'll leave it. Thank you very much indeed for your time and your indulgence this morning. Dr. Fiona Atuebwe is the WHO's new vaccines introduction officer joining us there from Brazzaville in Congo. Thanks very much indeed.